in front of almost every piece of property, there's an old boat that hasn't seen water for about 20 years. <laughs> It's a sad situation that we got into. It never really turned out the way it was supposed to. If you don't have the land, you're never gonna get the water. And we're close to losing everything or gaining it back. The community is not gonna stand for that. And we're gonna fight for it. Luxton Lake is probably one of the most beautiful lakes in this part of New York State. Oh, it's beautiful. And in the fall, oh, just, just stand out here and watch the leaves change, you know, it's a beautiful thing, you know. It's still beautiful, but you know, just a few things missing. <laughs> it originally was about 79 acres. It's just in a nice part of the Catskills. There was a man named Luxon, and he had owned the lake. It wasn't a very deep lake, but it was a long one. And it's just a matter of putting this dam that they put in there into position. Everybody had a dream of being in the country. During the summer, it was a tourist area. The recreational activity was just what the rivers and the streams and the woods provided. There were several boarding houses around. Ours was the homestead boarding house. City people used to come and stay. They say, as soon as we go back, we start putting money into a jar to come up the next summer. <laughs> back in those days, the people didn't expect a lot of entertainment. They found it very pleasurable just to go into the Ten Mile River, dip their feet in the water, or go up to the Tustin Park and row some boats. This spot was just a wonderful place to be in the summertime. And even in the wintertime, because we came up in the winter as well. Hunting season, I think, was the best time of the year. We had the hunters down to the boarding house. They used to say to me when I'd be waiting on table, Mabel, I wish you'd wear shoes that we could hear you coming. <laughs> of course, my husband was right out there with them all the time. Somehow it was decided that this was going to be a black community. They called it Lucky Lake. I don't know, somehow it was lucky. It was marketed to people with limited income who were looking for an escape from the city. If you're coming from Brooklyn or Queens or something like that, it's about a three hour ride. They did a lot of promotion and they had black movie stars and sports figures come up here. They came with a busload anyway, and they had this one ball player. They had Willie Mays as a spokesman for him. And they gave him a piece of property, and this was a come on. So then they all bought, and they put up nice homes there. They thought when they retired in the city that they would love to come up here and live. Noble Sissel, he was a jazz musician. Noble Sissel, he was top band leader back in the 30s. He had a house right across the street from the lodge. That was his house right there. That first yellow house you see on the left. He taught me how to fish. He was a real nice older man. He's the one who showed me how to put the worm on the hook and how to be quiet when you're fishing instead of talking and just be patient. A number of his friends came from the jazz world. I mean, I understand that Louis Armstrong had a property up here, and it was basically at one time a completely black community with uh, the theme was basically jazz. Well, they didn't come up here to entertain. They came up here on vacation. And the water was the draw. Except to go and buy popsicles, the clubhouse was pretty much off limits to me.
the clubhouse got to have a reputation of being like a night spot, not only in the community, but in the area. They used to have parties here. This was a center, a hub of activity. People coming up from the city in the country, playing music, getting together in a somewhat forbidden place. We just had a meetings and have a good time, you know, got to socialize, you know, get together, yuck, yuck, bring your own food, bring your own whiskey, and have a good time. <laughs> I was here as a child, so I don't know what went on in the clubhouse at night. Many years ago, there was an electrician when he was around 18 or 19 years old, and his father didn't want him to frequent the place because it was owned by black people at the time. And he used to sign a phony name, so his father would never be able to find out that he was in here, but he used to come in here basically every single week. <laughs> My husband and I was down there at different times, and I don't know just who all they were. It was mostly New York City type of music. I don't recall any country western. Even when I was a child, there was talk about a need to repair the dam. We had some real heavy rains at times. Water would go over the top of the dam, and the dam was more than 100 years old. The dam itself was very little. It was just a capping over a natural rock formation. It was just a dam with a wooden, I guess you'd call it a deck, that you could go across. And it became a question of whose responsibility it was. To, to take care of the repairs. Lucky Lake Estates, they were the ones that should have made sure that that dam was kept in good condition. The finishing touch is when they started to put the heavy trucks across that dam. And that's when they had opened the road on this side. They didn't start out by building a bridge first. They put logs across the top of the dam and they were running trucks across there. They say logging. Uh, I didn't see logging because I didn't purchase until after they had finished logging everything they wanted over here. And Jim and I saw the dam, it had a crack in it, and said, what do you think about this? You think it's gonna break? And nah. I said, no, this dam's been here since 1925. It's gonna be here long after. But we found out later that uh, the town, apparently they were having trouble with the DEC. There were plans that were constantly disapproved. It was decided that the dam was gonna be removed for the safety of the houses downstream. The DEC was responsible and they acted in the manner that was the safest for the people below that dam. And nobody did anything until one day the DEC came with their dynamite. Somebody forced somebody to break the dam. And as I understand it, it took them two tries to blow it up. One shot of dynamite didn't take the dam down, they had to do it twice. I was here today when they took the dam down and the water went out. What was that like? I walked the whole lake out in about a few hours. And the last of the water you know, just went out. And that was it. <sighs> What's up, man? A lot of water. <laughs> it didn't harm anybody. It didn't damage anybody, you know. We were just missing the lake. <laughs> As far as the, uh, the folks that lived down there, uh, they didn't want it taken out because without the lake there, their property was worth nothing. The Luxton Lake Property Owners Association uh, decided to sue the town of Tustin for the loss of the lake, and they lost the, the case. After the dam was taken out, 90% uh, of the, the residents down there just abandoned the property. They passed away and the places they just decayed, a lot of them. The community really suffered by the loss of this lake. It's a sad situation that we got into. The property owners couldn't hold on to the clubhouse because they didn't have enough membership fees. So the president at the time made a decision to uh, sell the clubhouse rather than lose it for taxes. There was nothing else that was community. Once the, the clubhouse was gone and the water was gone, that was the end of it.
Now Association has repurchased the clubhouse and grounds. So we are now on our grounds. <laughs> Way imaginable that we could get that lake back. We're talking about what's going to make your heart sing. L A K E. Do <laughs> you think it's possible to bring back Buxton Lake? No, I don't. If enough people want it back, I think it will come back. There's no reason why this community can't <laughs> thrive. It may not be the same as it was before, but it would be a community, a real community. Amen. And the centers of the community are the clubhouse and the grounds and the lake. When I take my vacation in heaven What a wonderful time that will be Here in concerts by the heavenly chorus And the smiles of the angels I'll see Sitting down on the banks of the river Neath the shade of the evergreen tree I shall rest from my burdens forever Won't you take your vacation with me? Won't you take your vacation with me?